What are international contracts and what is the best way of dealing with them? Well, to begin with, an international contract is simply a contract between two nations or between individuals who are citizens of, members of, living in, or from different nations. So the essence of an international contract is that the rules of contracting are not uniform or uniformly applicable to both individuals. That is, there may be rules of contract applicable to a person in a foreign nation and uh, rules of contracting applicable to the person in the present nation. So with that being said, there needs to be additional care taken to negotiate or work out the terms of the agreements between these parties. Now we're going to focus on private international agreements, that is agreements between private parties, not governmental agencies or actors, when in carrying on business in between these, these individuals from different nations. So how do you account for that? Well, generally, the core contract principles, the idea that a contract is an enforceable agreement between individuals, remains true or constant as part of this transaction. But many of the other terms with regard to what it takes to form the contract, what it takes to enter into it or consummate uh, the agreement, what it takes to perform your obligations and what are the standards there, all of these types of things are still considerations and should be directly negotiated with the other party. Now, with that being said, all of the potential contingencies, all of the things that would otherwise go into a contract, it would be very difficult to think about all of these things and negotiate them individually as part of an agreement. So the parties generally use some form of model international law that states the terms or standards, for example, for forming the contract, the standards by which the contract will be interpreted, and other things such as what, what is the performance standard, what is the uh, course of action necessary if the parties disagree on whether one party or the other has performed their obligations under the agreement. So all of these things need to be dealt with in some way. And by identifying a model law, such as the uh, contract for the international sale of goods, for example. This is a model law put out by a committee of the United Nations, which is very useful in laying out the core or background principles of contracting in the international setting. But there are many other uh, potentially useful or applicable model rules that the parties to the agreement could implement into the agreement or set as the standard by which the contract will be uh, evaluated, judged, carried out, that type of thing. Now, what are some key provisions that may need to be dealt with in an international contract? Well, just like a domestic contract, the actual actions that must be carried out, the obligations, the duties, right? In the sale of a product, what product is sold, what money is going to be paid, the timing of payment, the method of payment, that type of thing. These are the core provisions, right? The action provisions. And then each party will generally re represent things to the other as being true. They'll make statements that these are, this is factually accurate or true. I own the goods that I'm selling you. I have the power and authority to sell these goods, right? These are representations. Warranties carry forward and say this will remain true until a future time in the agreement, right? Until the closing, until the sale of the goods. Okay? Representations, warranties. Covenants are side obligations, things that don't go to the heart of the agreement, but are obligations of the parties that they must do as part of the deal. And think of this as minor things like um, get securing a title or, or, or notarization or inspection of some goods or something like that. These are things that need to be done as part of the contract. And it, a covenant is a promise to say, I will do these things right, as part of the process for actually delivering the core value or undertaking the core actions of the agreement, all right? Conditions. Conditions are things that must be present or occur before the contract is enforceable or before the, uh, or that if these conditions do occur, it makes the contract unenforceable, right? So there are certain things such as, you know, if war breaks out, right, this is a condition that may interrupt the trade or sale of goods. In that event, the contract is canceled. Um, another contingency, it can 
or excuse me, a condition that would be precedent to rather than after the fact would be, okay, the market rate for these goods must reach this point before we have an agreement. Okay, so you enter into the agreement, and if the market rate for certain goods reaches a certain point, then all of a sudden the condition has occurred and you have an enforceable agreement. So you'll put in all the necessary conditions in there, and then you'll put in end game provisions, meaning what happens if one party does not live up to their obligation under the agreement? What are your remedies? What are the options for you to enforce your rights under the agreement? Okay, now, once again, all of this can be again, encapsulated in the agreement, or a lot of this can be left to uh, the general provisions available under some model law that is going to serve as the background for the contract. With that being said, you will oftentimes choose the rules of a particular nation, or you'll choose some model law to be the choice of law rules applicable to the contract. And whichever you choose, you should specifically identify that in the agreement so that the general legal standards are set and understood as part of the agreement. And then identifying a dispute resolution process. Now, generally international disputes are handled as part of uh, an arbitration rather than trial or in either of the given countries. Uh, the reason for this, once again, it's very difficult to execute um, or enforce your rights in a foreign country. You may have very little familiarity or very little access to the means or methods by which one might enforce them uh, their rights. If you enforce it in your home country or your own country, it's very difficult to enforce a judgment, for example, against a foreign party. So rather than do that, oftentimes the parties agree to using some international body as a dispute resolution forum and uh, mechanism for enforcing one's right. And there are many, many organizations out there that specialize in this functions that that provide the rules of dispute resolution that give you access to arbitrators and things of that nature. So with that being said, these are the primary considerations you need to t consider when enter in, entering into an international contract or agreement.